Hello class. Um, we are starting a new week in this class, of course. It's April 4th, and we're starting on descriptive and inferential statistics. Now, this is our week on statistics. Um, what are statistics? Well, it's mathematical equations that you can run to determine whether the results of your research are significant and are very probable. You can determine basically the probability that the results that you created are representative of your population of people. And so statistics is sometimes referred to as sadistics, which is, you know, a lot of people hate math and hate the amount of calculations you can run. Uh, I tend to have a positive view about them. I know that they can't answer everything, but uh, I think that they they can be very useful in, in determining significant differences between different populations or different studies and so forth. So let's say you have a study that you conducted, and uh, you you implement this new technique in let's say a classroom you do a new technique in your classroom and you have a group of students and they really responded well to this technique statistics can help you to know whether that technique really made a difference though I mean they, your students scores might go up yes but if we implemented this in another place or another location or another setting would that also help other students is that what's the probability that other students would also respond so well to this type of situation to this type of um, implementation and that statistics really can help us to know whether there's a real meaningful difference or not give us probabilities for that so that's what it's about um, you're going to be reading about inferential and descriptive statistics you'll start with descriptive first um, and one way to think about this is population versus sample um, so a sample might be a class your class of 25 students in your k-12 classroom maybe um, but population would be the whole world of K-12 fourth grade students. Let's say you're teaching fourth grade. So population versus sample is a way to think about descriptive versus inferential. Descriptive statistics are usually just about your population, kind of the smaller group. You could maybe say something like 30% of respondents or 30% of my people scored this highly, 70% of my people scored this score, and that's descriptive statistics. You're just basically saying what happened within that certain sample. But inferential statistics allow you to find out what, or you to predict what might happen to the whole population had they received the same type of treatment or the same type of ideas. So that's kind of the difference. You can think about it as population versus sample. In other words, inferential statistics will help you make decisions or make predictions about the population of people, a much larger group. And then descriptive statistics just tell about a certain sample of um, people. So that's kind of the difference. Um, well, let's take a look at this for a moment. So let's say you have a research study here. You're comparing one group of people versus another group. And uh, these are the two groups. So let's say this group has, uh, they take a test, let's say. And group one has received a different type of treatment. Maybe they've received special counseling. And then they take a test. And they have an average score of 50 on that test. And over here on the right, we have group two. And they have an average score of 45. And so statistics can help us to know whether the special treatment that was received in this group is likely to be something that will work in other situations as well. So group one received this special type of counseling then they took a test and they got a higher score which was good that's what you want to have happen. Group two did not receive any such special counseling and therefore they only have 45 or at least that's what we think is and that group only has 45. So based on this, we can say, well, it looks like we should do that counseling for everybody, right? But you don't really know for sure because maybe just the first group is a better group. Maybe they came into the situation as a better group than the second group. Maybe, they, maybe there are certain characteristics about that group that we didn't really take into account. So that's why we do statistics is we try to figure out exactly why. We try to figure out how what's the probability that group one would always score this way and then if we can figure out that probability we can say okay now we know for sure that there is a statistically significant difference between the groups 
and meaning that if we implement this special counseling program to everybody, most likely every, whatever groups we implement it to will score better than groups that don't receive that type of counseling. So that's something to think about as well. It's just the idea of statistics helping us to figure out how things go. But of course, you have to have numeric information. It has to be a part of a quantitative study in order for you to be able to determine, determine statistical significance between the types of groups. So an inferential statistics will tell us whether or not these populate or these samples would relate to the entire population at large, like I mentioned. Another example is, let's say you have a group of students and they keep averaging about 50 points. Let's say it's students in a classroom and hold on. And they, uh, you know, week after week they take a reading test score and they get 50 points an average of 50 points on that reading test score. So like, let's say there are 25 students in the class, they keep getting 50 points on a test score. And it's like a research study that we're actually running. And then you implement something special. So let's, I'll use another shape for that, maybe a heart. Maybe a heart will inf implement that, okay. So then we have this heart here, and we implement something special every week. So we have a bunch of hearts. Oops, I need to copy the heart. And then what we see from happening from that is that once that special implementation, maybe it's a new reading curriculum, has been implemented, we see that students gain a higher score. Maybe it's 60 is their average score among, 50, among 25 students. So you might look at this and you might say, well, great. I mean, it looks like the heart implementation that we create is working. Um, but again, a statistical expert would say, well, you don't really know because you don't know what the probability was that students may have gotten this from just improving over time. People get older, for instance, and as we get older, students tend to get a little smarter and more intelligent. Um, there's a lot that can be done um, with this information. So that's one thing to be aware of is that statistical significance allows us to know whether the changes that happen are really changes or are likely to happen or they are not likely to happen based on statistical methods. And if we do find a statistically significant difference between 50 and 60 here and these ones, then we can say, well, it's likely that whatever we implemented, the hearts, whatever we implemented was the effect of that. That's what affected it and made it happen. And if that is not statistically significant, we can say, well, then the 60s are based on just other things maybe. Students got a little bit smarter over time, but we can't really necessarily say it was because of what we implemented. So that's sort of statistics on the basic level. What you need to know is, is kind of what I'm presenting here and, of course, the things that you'll read in the book and take a quiz on this week. But I don't expect you to be an expert on statistical methods after just a week on statistics in a class. In fact, in my doctorate program, I had to take um, many different semesters, I think three or four semesters of classes on statistical methods to understand them for research purposes. Now, I did want to introduce you to a few statistical methods, or at least... SPSS, which is something that is also mentioned in your textbook as you look at inferential um, statistics and data. So SPSS has a nice data editor and you can enter data in here and you can actually crunch the statistics without having to do all the math necessarily. It is good to understand as much as you can about statistics before doing anything like this. And uh, But I'll just show you a couple of the more common methods of calculating things. Um, so, for instance, I can look at compare means here and analyze this set of data on sex, age, benefits, honest, nice, virtuous. There's a whole bunch of different information on each person. And I can just do this independent samples t-test. Now, again, a t-test is a test of, of um, to just to determine differences between two groups. It's generally just for two groups and to tell what the difference is between them. So I have this grouping variable down here called sex. 
basically that means gender, right? And it's one or two. And then I want to see if there are any differences on these variables. If there is maybe maybe one of the genders is wiser than the other, or better, or good, more good. So then I can just run this nice little test. And it provides me with the number of people in each one. And it also provides me with a mean for each one. So it looks like, for good anyway, uh, gender 1, which I think is male, is 5.28, while, while gender 2 is 5.29. That's a different mean there. And then for males, 5.33 and 5.61 on Ys. And it tells me these measures of variance too, standard deviation, for instance, and standard error mean. Down here, though, it'll test significance. It tells me a value, a T value here, and degrees of freedom, and it gives me a significance value. Now I'm looking for a significance, a probability. Most statistics are looking for a 95% probability that something is different. And so that would be 0 0.05 or less. and Or less than 0 0.05 actually is what we're looking for, because we're looking for greater than 95% probability. In this case, I'm not getting that, right? There is no significant difference, because that number there, the 0 0.482 under sig, significance, is higher than a 0 0.05, not lower. So that is not significance. In other words, even though this mean says that in general women are more wise than men in this case, or in this um, population, or in this sample anyway, even though that's what it says, the, the mean is a little bit higher, we can't rule out other things that that make that so. And so we, we can say that with pretty good surety that no, there are no differences among genders in this case you know, on wisdom or goodness as the case is. So statistics can be run very easily using something like SPSS statistics and help us to do it a lot more quickly and understand it a lot more quickly. Another possible test for comparing means is ANOVA, Analysis of Variance. And again, that's just another way of finding out things. So I'm going to enter in the factor sex and then enter in good and wise again so we see how they look. So dependent list and factors, and we can hit OK on this one. And it gives us again another significance item right here. And it gives us a 0.454, which means that's higher again than 0 0.05. That means it's not significant difference between males and females. Same answer as before, but just a different way of finding it. We're running ANOVA now. One big difference between t-tests and ANOVA is that t-tests usually are meant to only take differences between two groups. And ANOVA, you can take more than that group. So you can take multiple groups or two. So that just shows you a few tests in SPSS for this week. Um, so let's go back to our course then. You're going to be reading about descriptive and inferential statistics and looking at these concepts and trying to understand what's going on there and taking a couple of quiz on those, quizzes on those. And then also you're going to take a look at the literature review from before and you're going to update it and uh, add in more sources to create a final literature re review with the following requirements. It should be focused towards your planned research study, which means that the more general articles that you feature in your literature review will be at first, and then the more specific ones that have more to do with your study will become last in the literature review. You are using APA formatted narrative writing again, just like the, pre the other literature review. Studies are categorized logically, writing flows logically, systematically, 15 or more sources of information, and it includes an introduction, body, and summary. This will be incorporated into your future assignments and make sure that you look at my feedback that I gave you on your preliminary literature review to finish this assignment before the end of the week this week. I'll also take a look at your other assignment very soon and give you grades for those within the next day or two and uh, that's all for this week so have a good week.